Well guys, remember a while back I did a video on my very first tape recorder I got for Christmas of 1985. This General Electric right here. It's a model 3-5015D. I actually have another identical duplicate model out in storage, but this one has the original sticker on it still. Um, like I said, very special episode. My first tape recorder. <coughs> Just an entry level unit. But the purpose of this video, and there's going to be multiple videos to follow that are all very special episodes featuring the tape recorders of my childhood that are very dear to me and very special. This next tape recorder I'm going to present to you, you may have seen before. It's an old video I did from March of 2008, and I'll insert that after I describe it. While I never actually owned this tape recorder when I was little, it took 20 years, but I finally got it. This guy here, I got in early 2008. This Bell & Howell right here, you know, commercial tape recorder for school use, commercial use. Not just school, but like any institution really, I mean. Commercial recorder, model 3191A. Precision made in Japan. I believe the OEM on this is Sanyo. When I was little, I think the first time I saw this tape recorder was when I was in kindergarten. It, uh, music teacher had it. His name was Mr. Maurer. I remember that. And I was obsessed with this tape recorder. This is in 1987. I'm not sure when this tape recorder was made. And I didn't do too extensive of a research on it, but it's obviously like mid... 80s, 86, 87-ish. And one more thing about the tape recorder I saw, Mr. Maurer's tape recorder. The last time I saw it was in 1995 when I started um, middle school, but what school I was at combined the middle and high schools into one building. So the high school auditorium was the last time I saw it. It was actually hooked up to the big sound system for the whole auditorium and by then unfortunately it had a crack in the case like right here where it may have been dropped but it was still working flawlessly and the last model I saw after that is when we moved in eighth grade the one of the teacher had one of these tape recorders but it wasn't the same it instead had a simple LED lamp instead of a VU meter slash battery meter and that was the last time I saw one of these. Then it comes to 2008. I get on eBay and finally got it back. So I've had this tape recorder for nearly nine years now. Now I'm going to do a jump flashback here to like an earlier video I was attempting to make of this tape recorder. I did some maintenance on it. See, when I got the tape recorder in 08, I merely just cosmetically cleaned it up, but... I recently went through to the thorough uh, take it apart, uh, thorough cleaning, and all adjustments, which I'll show. So, here you go. Well, here it is on May 2nd, 2015. Still works fine, but it's going to need a cleanup, tape speed calibration, as tape head azimuth adjustment, and. Um, yeah, you know, and it's probably going to check out the belts in it, too, see how they are. And this is going to be my first time taking it apart, too. And here's what the insides look like. It has good RF shielding. Solid tape mechanism, which I'm going to pull up. The ground cable actually connects to the chassis. And I, I, I say it's a good thing because I have that 2004 JVC quote-unquote professional VCR. The ground pin just goes to a piece of plastic in the VCR. So, on the speaker, it's a 3.2 ohm, 2.5 watt, maximum 3.5 watt. 
I know this unit's properly rated because it goes up pretty loud. So let's just start pulling this apart. And here it is. And as you know, this is like a commercial grade unit. See, it still has a nice heavy flywheel, big motor in it. Has three belts, all of which are still in good shape. I'm just going to clean them. Um, so, in contrast, it's kind of built, I'd say, similar to the 70s vintage tape recorders. Here's the relay here for. It has a permanently attached power cord, so just like the vintage tape recorders, the much older ones, I should say, plug in, relay turns on, disconnects the battery. And as you know, it has the multiple headphone out jacks. Let me see, there's three. There's six of them out. And as well as it has this, plus a four ohm speaker only jack. I'm not finding any manufacturer labels in here. I believe this is a Sanyo made unit. The whole thing's made in Japan. So it's definitely a good made unit. Just a bit newer, 80s vintage. It's so let's go from here. Okay, and here's the mechanism operating in rewind mode. I just got done cleaning all the belts with rubber cleaner because they're still in good shape. Okay, let's start putting it back together. And here it is with the mechanism pulled up. Part of the issue is there is a square hole that allows you to access the top of the motor for speed control. Unfortunately, I don't have a screwdriver or anything equivalent long enough to get in there. So I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to dust this thing out, clean it. And put it back in. I got the tape speed precisely calibrated as best I could. That um, the speed adjustment's very, very touchy. <coughs> but here's what I've been doing now. Since I don't have a standalone frequency counter, I have this little app on my phone. And I'll be quiet for a second. You'll see it should be one kilohertz. I say that's pretty close. I mean, it's it was very very tight trying to get it exact, but there you go. In retrospect, um, it was before it was displaying uh, 1,008 hertz, and I can tell just by listening to how it's playing a little bit too fast, just by that much. So, just doing that little tweak gets it precise. So there, before I put it back together, this, I mean, this for, oh, you know, when this was made, um, <coughs> probably like 87 or so, um, I'm just looking, I mean, it has individual brakes on both, uh, spin, real spindles right here, and it's full automatic stop, and as you can see, it has, um, it's AC bias, Everything. I mean, this is you know, you know, 80s, uh, about 86, 87, but still very well-made unit. It's still one of my favorite tape recorders. So let's reassemble. Okay, we're back. And as you saw, many th you know, it's been fully serviced. Original belts are still fine, just properly conditioned. They're like new, and uh, I'm going to turn it on, as well as the tape head azimuth screw has been precisely adjusted. So that's all been done. All, everything that could be adjusted or calibrated has been done on it, and it's been, you know, Redetailed, I guess you could say, with Novus plastic polish and Vinylex. 
So a quick overview of this tape recorder. From the outline here, as you can see, it has an oval speaker. In there, there's your battery slash VU meter. Tape counter, 2X, and by 2X that means it's driven off of the supply reel and for every two revolutions gives a digit on the tape counter. Has volume and tone controls. Built-in condenser mic. PA mode with LED lamp. Automatic level control. And it does have cue and review functions which I'll sh demonstrate. And I'll also get that part in a second I'll explain has a flexible handle on it, like this. And on the side here, microphone, remote, speaker only, 4 ohm, and auxiliary in. The speaker only thing is what I was obsessed with when I was little. The Mr. Maurer had um, some, uh, let me see, it was an Audiotronics uh, stereo classroom record player and it had the same quarter inch jack so he would take that speaker put it in the middle of the room and plug it into this speaker only jack and being a much larger speaker with now an eco magnet it made a big difference the internal speaker is rather decent on this too mind you you know and then your standard microphone remote and auxiliary and jacks Currently, um, we're in the middle of redoing the basement setup for the time being. A lot of the record players I have are in storage right now. I don't have any external speakers here to test it with, so sorry for the time being. And on the back, you have my other obsession, having six different headphone outputs. The master one right there. I never, we never used those on the tape recorder in, um, when I was in elementary school. And uh, let me flip it over, actually. On the bottom, it has a permanently attached grounded cord set. And just like the early vintage tape recorders, it has a, I mean, early portable ones. It has, since the line cord is permanently attached, it uses a relay to disengage the batteries if you plug it in. This right here is merely cord storage as you can see. And then here's your battery compartment. So that's the quick little tour of the unit. So we'll grab a tape and we'll give it a try. One thing to note that I remember when I was in 8th grade, when one of my classmates, and like I said, what, even as a kid, I, I don't know, people just ugh, don't want to go there. Anyhow, this idiot kid went to put a cassette in one of these, and he's all trying to load it in the door. This doesn't have a, um, it, the door is mainly just a cover. You load it, like the early tape cassette decks, just like that. He spent like five minutes trying to figure this thing out. He's like, uh, it's broken. Uh, really? And this is in the 90s when cassettes were still a common recording medium. Uh, I don't know. That's closed. So, let me get to a part in the tape and we'll demonstrate this. Alright, I'm at a good part to try for a quick demonstration. This cassette was recorded on that sound design stereo from when I made the video of it. Um, so that's where this source came from. And uh, let's give it a try here. Notice how it doesn't use the standard symbols. Okay. Q 
it mutes the audio on Q and review functions. Okay. And as you can see, the VU meter operates as a battery checker even on AC. That's the only thing I wish there was some on a lot of tape recorders like this that have the combination meter where in playback it would just work as a VU meter and if it, if it was on battery it had like a button you press to do a battery check but other than that so here's fast forward and the battery meter comes on Re rewind and eject okay so next thing we'll do now is demonstrate some recording capabilities now this cassette I have right here came in with one of my tape recorders I'm gonna feature in my next video and nothing wrong with it oddly enough though they bulk erased it by simply recording with the unit the whole time and I'll get into that later but that said, this will make a perfect test tape for now. So, load it up. We'll just do um, microphone built in first. So, sit there. Automatic level control. And uh, press play and record at the same time. They're not linked together. Wait for the leader to pass. Okay. Today's date is November 20th, 2016 at 2.57 a.m. This is a test of the Bell & Howell 3191A commercial cassette recorder from the mid-80s using its built-in microphone on automatic level control. Got tone control flat. You notice when I had the sound design tape in there I had to boost up the tone just a little bit. Well, again, that's sound design. <laughs> so, here we'll go with this. This is full AC race, AC bias, and everything's in alignment, it's perfect. So here we go. Okay. Today's date is November 20th, 2016 at 2.57 a.m. This is a test of the Bell & Howell 3191A commercial cassette recorder from the mid 80s using its built-in microphone on automatic level control. Alright, now I was using the built-in mic. The only disadvantage of using a built-in mic is the ability of it pick picking up the transport mechanism of the cassette. Hence why external microphone. Well, this is going to use a very special microphone. However, nothing high-end. This sound design microphone from the 70s. That was my dad's originally. I may have mentioned this before in probably a couple other videos. But at the same time period, late 87, I found this microphone in a drawer. And I started using it with my tape recorders I had at the time. Now, this microphone isn't that great of a performer. Again, sound design. <laughs> it's not really focusing on it, but. So, we'll use an external microphone to show how it performs. And here we go. Okay. We're all geared up to go here. So, let's try this. Okay, this is a test of the Bell & Howell 
3191A using an external microphone. Let's see how this came out. Okay, this is a test of the Bell & Howell 3191A using an external microphone. Let's see how this came out. And as you can see very well for what it is, it sounded really good. Now, next we'll do music recording. And uh, we'll just do it with a digital source like my phone right there. Just because that's what I've been doing in the past, we'll do it now. One very important thing to do when you're doing this, giving it some monorail unit, I have a stereo to monorail converter on this to eighth inch jack. We'll go into auxiliary in, which is just basically your line level input. Okay, let me cue up some music and we'll give us a try. Now, as you can see, I'm playing a video off YouTube, music video. No automatic level control. PA mode on this is not like the vintage tape recorders that gave you a sound monitoring option while recording. Um, PA mode, you have to use an external microphone, and it basically goes over top um, while you have play engaged. It's how that works. It's a really odd setup. So PA mode doesn't necessarily mean sound monitoring. I'm in love. And stopping the tape to avoid copyright police. As you can see, um, fantastic treble response, fantastic in everything. You know, I had the tone control set for, you know, neutral. Um, no, you know, zero. That's how things are supposed to record. Not like sound design. I know I keep picking on it, but it was my first stereo and I still do love it dearly. But this, this, superb. And that should be about it for this demonstration of the Bell & Howell Model 3191A. Again, a fantastic tape recorder and a big part of my childhood. Fantasizing about the day I'd own one. Um, real quick, back then this would have been like a two to three hundred dollar tape recorder. We're talking in today's money about five hundred dollar plus. Now, it is pure quality, and as you can see, 30 years later, it still works fine on all original parts, including the belts. But, that said, you know, my parents, you know, this is what I really wanted, but they're not going to buy a $500, you know, $250 tape recorder back then for me. So, I mean, I'll get into that in the next episode here, what I did end up with after the General Electric. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and click like and subscribe, and bye-bye.